right, a couple of weeks ago I got to be the event photographer at the Cherry City Classic, which is a motorcycle show here in Salem, Oregon. These are seven things I learned in doing event photography. How I got this position was not by somebody going to my Instagram page and saying, hey, that guy, we should hire that guy to come do this. No, I had to email them, I had to seek them out, email them, show them some of my work, and they agreed to bring me on. At the time I talked to him, he already had two photographers on deck, so he brought me on as an extra, which kind of was fortunate for him because on the first day of this shoot, it was three days, the first day of this three-day shoot, I was the only photographer that showed up. Worked out really well in my favor. He was very grateful that I kept continuously showing up and I was there for the entire thing. I was there from the moment the show started to the last person walking out. Which leads me to kind of one of the most important part of being an event photographer, and this is probably a no-brainer, but you've got to show up. You have to be there. You have to actually physically go in there like you agreed to do. That shouldn't be something anybody has to say. You agreed to do it. You should just do it. For whatever reason, these other people did uh, not show up, so I was the only one. My first two tips for photographing a motorcycle show or any other kind of event is, number one, get their attention. They are not going to seek you out. You have to seek them out. Number two, show up. This should be a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how often this happens. Now, on the first day of the shoot, on the morning of, before I left for the shoot, I decided to switch camera bags. I was using one camera bag, decided that another one would actually be better and more efficient for me to use during this event. At the event on the first day, I've got my camera up, taking photos, doing all the cool stuff that I love doing, and then I started getting a flashing red battery light, which meant that battery was dead went to go change batteries and realized that in my haste when I had switched camera bags, the one thing I forgot was to check my batteries. I didn't bring my extra batteries with me. Fortunately, I did have an extra camera body with a fresh battery in it that I pulled that battery out, put it in this thing, and was able to keep shooting for the rest of the day. It worked out real well. I ended up using two full batteries that day. If I hadn't decided to change bags at the last minute or if I had some kind of a checklist, it wouldn't have been quite as stressful for me. So tip number three is to so tip number three is to check your gear, and make sure you have everything you need. On the surface, the lighting in the arena was great, but it really wasn't. There, the floor was just like dark gray concrete that just sucked in all the light. It didn't produce any back. It just kind of held it in. Now, normally I shoot in manual mode, like fully manual mode. I'm controlling the aperture. I'm controlling the shutter speed. I'm controlling the ISO. I'm controlling everything. But for this show, and because the lighting challenge, I ended up going to shutter priority. That way I could have a higher shutter speed and not worry about having to deal with my aperture or my ISO. And I could just use the shutter speed to do what I need to do. It worked out flawlessly. It did the job. It did it well. So tip number four is to make sure your camera settings are what works for you and your camera. Okay, we all have our height that we see the world from. We stand straight with perfect posture. That's our view. It's our normal view. It's when you drop down or stand on something that you actually get a better view, you get more details, a different kind of view that you're getting the photos from. So I'm like standing here, shooting straight. This is this plane of view, that's always my plane of view. But if I bring the camera up high and point it down, that gives me a whole other view. Or I bring the camera down low and I point it up. It gives me a whole other view. Also at these events, you can shoot through things, whether that be shooting through another motorcycle or you're shooting through some parts to get a little, glimpse of a piece of artwork it works really well and you get some really great photos like this so tip number five tip number five is to shoot low and shoot through there are different reasons to use a flash yes it brightens your subject up and makes better lighting in an otherwise poor lighting situation and at the jack and long building at the cherry city classic motorcycle show the lighting was terrible but in addition to using a flash to light your subject, you can also use the flash to isolate your subject. Sometimes, especially at events, there are a lot of distracting elements in the backgrounds of your photos that you really can't do anything about. Most of the time at these events, you have to have a very quick turnaround with these photos in order to get them to your client. You don't have a couple of hours per photo to run it through Photoshop and get rid of some stuff. You have to deal with it right there. So, one of the things you use a flash for is to isolate your subject. Using a flash to isolate your subject is not going to remove those distracting elements, but it's going to draw less attention to them. Put a flash on your camera, snap a photo. Now you've created a bright spot in the middle of your object, person or object, wherever you're taking a picture of, and everything in the background is not going to be completely removed, but it's going to be far less distracting if you brighten your subject up. 
it is vital to understand how a flash works, especially an external flash. That way you can adjust your camera settings and also adjust your flash settings to whatever it is you're taking a photo of. And you're gonna be making that adjustment probably pretty frequently when you're doing this. So tip number six is to use a flash and know its capabilities. Pretty obvious that when you're at a motorcycle show, the one thing you want to take pictures of is motorcycles, but there are a lot of other things that you need to take pictures of. Vendors, there are people setting up shop, there are people selling t-shirts, there's people selling artwork. There were a multitude of tattoo artists there who were giving people tattoos. There was a brewery, and you want to get photos of all of this stuff. There's a band that's playing. You want to get photos of that band that is playing. The list will go on for a while, and there is no shortage of things to photograph at an event. Most importantly, there are people there. There are people, all kinds of cast of characters that you want to get photos of. There are people who work really hard on their motorcycles and you want to display them. You want to get photos of those people looking proud with their bike. There are people who are there to see the bike. You get kids who are there just in awe over these motorcycles that people put so much work and so much effort and so much time and money into. And one of the best things is you get to meet these people. Like this guy here, probably the nicest, kindest gentleman I've ever met in my entire life super cool guy. So the seventh and final tip is photograph everything, especially dogs. Those are my seven tips for shooting an event. If you got something out of this video, please start a conversation in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Until next time, bye bye